guys. Hi everyone. I'm gonna give all of you a couple minutes to join and this is what we're painting today. So pretty. All right guys, I'm gonna give all of you few minutes to join and then we'll start in a couple minutes and in the meantime let me copy this link and oh hi i see the comments today yes hi valerie yes guys feel free to say hi in chat yes hi christine hi everyone Yes, so many of you are here. That's awesome, guys. This is what we're painting today. Isn't this exciting? Super exciting. Okay, I'm going to give you another one minute, and then we'll start. Just make sure, in the meantime, to grab all your supplies, and I will talk you through what we're going to need today in one minute. So you guys just want to make sure nobody is lost and everyone knows where to find us. All right, I think we have all of you here, so let's start. So my name is Vera, for those of you who don't know me, I will be your instructor for tonight, and I will show you how to paint this beautiful painting with a large, large moon and some clouds here, and a cliff, and a tree, and a swing. There's a lot going on here, and there's a lot of purples and blacks and pinks and some blues there as well. So before we start, let's go through... Um, our supplies and make sure we have everything that we need. I'm going to be using the same size canvas. This is nice large 16 by 20 inch canvas. Um, you can use the same or you can use smaller, no problem at all, whatever you feel comfortable with. Keep in mind the bigger your canvas, the longer it's going to take you and the harder it's going to be. So if you would like to make your job a little bit easier, you can go maybe half size of what I'm using or maybe even quarter. But if you would like to go with the same um, big one, go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to. Okay, now, next thing we're going to need is some water. So make sure you grab some painting water, have it right here in this wonderful little jar. And you're going to need a plate or a palette, something to mix your paint on. This is what I'm using, but anything works. A piece of cardboard, a Tupperware lid, I have a Tupperware lid right here too. Anything you have will work just fine. And of course you're gonna need a paint. Most important, I'm gonna be using primary colors and I'll be mixing them into all shades of this. So I'm gonna be using um, white, black, red, blue, and yellow. For this painting, you actually don't need yellow. So you can do without it, 
But if you have premix, notice I don't have premix purples. I'll be mixing my purples. But if you do have premix purples, you could use that as well. You could use pinks, purples, blues. Grab all shades of pinks, purples, and blues that you have around you, which will be even better. So totally up to you guys. Um, and yes, thank you for all your messages. I will be checking them every now and then. Whenever I have a second, I'll be checking the messages to see if you guys have any questions. Uh, but if it gets crazy there and you see that I missed your question, just repeat it again. I'll respond to you as soon as I see it. And thank you all for joining us. Okay, brushes. We're going to need three brushes. I'm going to be using three different brushes. You guys can use more or less. It's totally fine. You can use whichever brushes you have. But it's good to have a variety. It's good to have a couple different sizes. So I'm going to be using the big brush. In my case, it's a big square. And I'm going to be using that for all this wonderful, colorful backdrop and for the moon and even for the cliff just for the basis of them now i have a medium brush as well medium square in my case that i will be using for the tree for fluff on the tree and for my clouds and the last brush that i have here is a small pointy detailed brush this brush i'm going to be using for fine details such as swing if i want to add the fine line somewhere here um, as accents if i would like to add some fine branches or star, so anything that you feel like you can do with any other brush, you're gonna do with your small, fine brush. What else? Oh, and you're gonna need a cloth or a paper towel. In my case, I have reusable cloth. I have actually lots of them here laying around. It's always good to have more than what you need or more than what you think you need. Perfect, so that's all we're gonna need. Now let's go through breakdown and make sure we have, um, we know what to expect and how this is gonna go. Do you guys have any suggestions? What do you think we're gonna do here first? Let me know in chat. Let's see who can guess it right. We'll go step by step. Let's see what's first, second, and so on. And in the meantime, I saw someone asking, show brushes again. Any brushes, as long as you have a large, medium, and small. In my case, two of them are square, one of them is pointy, but any brushes are fine. Just make sure you have a variety of sizes. Moon. Yes, that's right. Good guess, guys. Absolutely. So what are we going to do? We're going to put the shape of the moon. Absolutely, 100%. Moon in the background. 100%. Yes, you're absolutely right. So we're going to put the shape of our moon, and then we're going to move working on to our background. And we will do some purples, blues, and so on, and we'll finish with black. Only then, after we did the background and the shape of the moon, we're going to move on to the actual inside of the moon. And we will do some white here. And you see there are very, very light uh, smidges of pinks and blues and purples, very, very lightly. Outline the moon and do the background. You guys are so good at this guessing game. Wet the canvas, Laura. That's a very good suggestion, but um, not for this painting because we're starting with a sketch. So if we wet the canvas and we'll put moon, then all of this potentially may leak. So because we're doing the sketch first, we're not going to wet the canvas, but you are absolutely right. Usually we would wet the canvas first. All right. Yes. So let's say we did finish our background. We have our uh, colorful sky. We have our moon. After that, we're going to add the cliff. You're absolutely right. We're going to add cliff and a tree just in black. So the whole black cliff and the whole black tree, no fluff on the top. So no leaves, just the tree trunk and the branches. Once we have that, we're going to let all of this dry up because we're going to need to add a lot of colors on top to make it look like this. But before we can do that, we have to let it dry. As it's drying, we can start working on our um, clouds. And whenever the cliff is somewhat dry, we can start layering colors on it as well and then finish some clouds on top. And the last thing we're gonna do after our clouds and our cliff is done is we're gonna do tree and a fluff on our tree and a couple stars. As I mentioned, this has this painting has a lot going on there. So um, you might need a couple sessions actually if you might get overwhelmed halfway through. Just it's okay to do it in a couple sessions. This video is gonna stay on our page for maybe three, four weeks, and then we're gonna move it to YouTube where it's gonna stay forever. So if you feel like you can't finish it today or it's too much, no problem, just do what you can, then let it stand, and finish it whenever you can as well, because it's, it's not going anywhere. The video is going to be up. 
All right, so now, guys, grab your brushes. Let's do this. Let's start by putting a couple colors on our palette. We're going to start by putting white, uh, blue, and red on our palettes. So white, blue, and red. If you have pink, good, use pink. If you have dark, dark pink, you can use that instead of red. That's even better as a mixer. If you have multiple shades of blue, let's say you have light blue and you have dark blue and you have all kinds of blue, I am going with the darkest blue and the reason why, this is just primary blue, the reason why is because I can always make it lighter by adding a little bit of white, but I cannot make it darker. So this is as dark as it's going to get. So I would say if you have a variety of pinks and blues, always put the darkest one on your palette because then you can make all lighter shades by just mixing it with a little bit of white. So I have my white, blue, and red. And again, my red is more like magenta. It's like a very, very dark pink even though it's a primary red. You don't have white, what should you use instead? You cannot use anything instead of white. You need to have white for this painting. This is very important. Or alternatively, you can use a water style, a watercolor style and just avoid everything that's white. But there is really no way around that you really need white for this one. The same with black, you can't use anything instead of black, unfortunately. You can modify all other colors, but you have to have black and white here. But a good news, this video is not going anywhere, so you can do it another day and then just hang out with me today. Okay, guys, so you're going to grab your medium brush for next step. You can even use your larger brush, doesn't matter, small brush, we're just going to do outline, so whichever brush you're comfortable with. I'm going to go with a medium brush. I'm going to dip it in the water, and now I'm going to make just a regular bluey purple color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scoop some blue on the side, right here, now I'm going to scoop some red, right here, mix them up, now I'm going to take some white, put it in, it didn't turn purple, so I'm going to add more red. So you're mixing blue and red and white to make any shade of purple for this particular step. Oh, okay guys, do you see the comment that just popped up by... Um, I don't know, I can't pronounce that name, saying watch live here, that is a scam. If you can report that, that would be greatly appreciated because that's not a legit link. Please don't click on it. Feel free to put angry faces on it and report it to Facebook. Those people are not legit. All right, I have my just basic purple, red, blue, white, that's it, nothing else. Should you wear the canvas? No. And now, with this purple, let me show you mine. This is mine. So now with this purple, we're going to make a circle. So we're assuming that there is a full large moon right here, and we only see a portion of it. So just in your head, imagine that there is a huge, huge circle right here. And we're going to put it in. If you don't get it right from the first turn, that's okay. Just add a couple more lines. It's okay if it's not perfect. In the end of the day, you're not going to see all of it. We're going to add, we're going to cover a lot of it by our cliff, and then there are going to be clouds. There's going to be a lot going on there. So if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. Okay, guys, let me know once you're done. And yes, watch out for scammers. You can see there are a lot of scam comments in here. I am not even going to bother uh, deleting them now because I'm pretty sure I'm going to spend a whole event trying to stay on top of that versus teaching you how to paint. So I'm just going to let it stand and I will keep repeating myself that everyone should please be really vigilant. Don't click on links that are not legit.
Yes, and thank you for those of you who are reporting. That's really appreciated. Guys, let me know once you have your moon. And technically, you could make it bigger if you want, or you can make it smaller. Um, if you make it a little bigger, you're going to have a bit more sky. Sorry, a bit less sky and a bit more moon. If you make it smaller, you're going to have a bit less moon and more sky. So either one is fine. It, it really is a personal preference. Whatever you're more comfortable with here. Okay. Awesome. So guys, now once we have our moon right here, this wonderful beginning, we're going to switch a brush. So you're going to wash off your medium brush and you will grab your large brush. And you're going to dip it in the water. Now, actually, we can't totally wet the canvas because we already know where Moon is going to go, so we can just um, wet the rest of the canvas. At least that's what I'm going to do. Let's wet some canvas here. Really makes it so much easier to paint. And you see, do you remember I told you uh, why we, we're not wetting it right away? Because it's going to start leaking once we start putting paint. This is what's going to happen. It's going to be leaking. But we're okay with it now because we're not wetting it inside. We're just wetting it outside. So if it leaks, it's fine. We're going to cover it all with purple in a second anyway. So I'm just quickly going to wet everything outside my moon with um, just some water. Okay, guys, you see my background is really, really wet. Let me know once you have it and I'll show you what to do next. Um, Tiffany, to answer your question, our YouTube channel is just Artist Palette Durham, so pretty much the same name that we have on Facebook. And you will see, you'll see our logo there, and you'll see our faces. Or you can even search YouTube by the name of the video. So if you're looking for a certain particular video, just search the name of that video and it should pop up. All right, I see a couple of readies. That's awesome. So now, guys, what are we going to do? All this background, we will start um, adding brush strokes in a circular motion to cover all these things with a variety of different shades of purples. Some of them are going to be pinker, almost like a pink purple. Some of them are going to be more like a fuchsia. And some of them are going to be bluer. So it's going to be lots and lots of purples. So how are you going to do? You're going to use the purple that you just started with as a base. And then you're going to be made, making it either bluer or pinker. So just grab some of it on the side or use all of it. And let's say add a little bit of red and white. Do you see it turned a little bit um, different shade? It turned pinker. It turned warmer purple. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to take my pink, a uh, purple. I will mix my color as I go. And I'll recommend that you do the same thing. Just mix it as you go. And you can change the color by adding either a little bit more blue or a little bit more um, red slash pink or a little bit more white. So just keep adding a little bit of each color every time. Sorry, not all of them all together. If you want to make different shade, let's say only add a little more blue this time. And next time just add a little bit more white. And next time add a little bit more red. And next time add a little bit of something else, right? That's how you create a variety of shades. And create a new color as you go. So let's say next I'll go with this color. Now I'll add a couple large 
brush strokes right here. You always want to add a bit more than what you want to see in the end. And the reason why is because we're going to overlap all our colors. So in the end, you're going to see less of this color because next color is going to overlap this color. So always add a bit more than what you want to see. Now I did this color. I'm going to move on to next color. So what should I do? Let's add a bit more red. Why not? Doesn't really matter here in which order you put it. As long as you have a variety of shades, it's all good. So I just added a bit more red. You see, changed color. Now with this color, I'm gonna go right here. And I will add a couple more brush strokes. And you see, I'm overlapping this right away, so they blend nicely. And we're gonna continue doing this until the whole background here is covered. So now let's add more blue. We'll go with a bit bluer, darker color. So my next color, go right here. This is totally different shade. And again, I'm overlapping my colors a little. Good. Turn for next color. It's been too dark, so let's go with something lighter. I'll take some white, add it onto the same spot. I'll uh, we'll take a little bit more red, maybe. Yeah, do you see again? I made a new shade of purple. I'm gonna go here with it. So you just continue adding more and more shades of purple. Blue or purple, pink or purple, all kinds of purple. Now something to you. Keep in mind here, guys, do not use black yet for mixing your colors. We're going to use black on top, and we're going to overlap our purples once we're done with black, but don't use it to mix into your purples. And the reason why, it's not going to make it darker, it's going to make it dimmer. Especially if you have some white pre-mixed into your paint, it's going to make it grayer. So it's not going to be a vibrant color if you pre-mix black into it. It's not going to give you the desired effect. So just reserve it for later and we will darken up what we need to be darkened up with our black once we're done covering our background with purples. If you guys want to do your edges, you could do your edges right now as well. Just make sure you go on to, um, just make sure you continue using your purple onto your edge of the canvas. It, you don't have to match them perfectly. You can just choose one purple and do all the edges with purple. Um, or you can do all the edges with black. Or you can do all except moon with purple and black. And just leave those that are close to the moon unattended and we can wait for now or you can color match and actually bring every purple onto the edge either one of it is either way it's going to look really really good it just is going to be a lot more work if you're bringing every color onto the edge okay i'll give you a couple of minutes to do all of this guys so just lots and lots of shades of purple whichever ones are your favorite use them and overlap them and blend them and once it's all filled let me know in chat and i will show you what to do next in the meantime let me check what we have in chat yes guys this video is going to be up for a couple of weeks on our facebook and after that we're going to move it on to youtube so we're going to delete it from facebook to make more space for more new videos and we will move it on YouTube where it's going to stay pretty much forever.
I see a lot of questions about YouTube um, in comments here, so I'm just going to quickly go to YouTube, get our link, and I'll post it in comments for those of you who are asking while I wait for everyone to catch up. Yes, guys, absolutely. Thank you for reminding me that you could totally rewind the video. So if you would like to spend a bit more time on a certain step, um, you can just scroll back and rewatch it. The, your blue and red made gray. Hmm. Try different blue or different red. Sometimes it happens because we're all using different pigments, right? So if your pigments are actually just pure uh, pigments with nothing pre-mixed in them, they will make nice and beautiful and vibrant colors. But sometimes, let's say red will have a bit of yellow pre-mixed into it to make it more orangey red, or blue, blue will have a bit more, a bit of green or a bit of uh, red pre-mixed into it. In those cases, sometimes when you try to mix colors, it doesn't go right. And it can go really, really wrong. Like you're saying, it could turn gray, it could turn looking brown. So it really, it depends on pigments that you're using. So really on a brand of paint and on a particular pigment. So I would say if you have similar colors, if you have, let's say, different blue or pink instead of red, try mixing those. Um, that might work better for you. Yes, Judy, thank you for responding. Absolutely. We're just using lots of different shades of um, purple here, and we're making it as we go. If you have pre-mixed purples, go for it. You can use them. If not, just blue and red or blue and pink that you're mixing in a different um, combinations and proportions of blue versus red versus white to make all the different shades here and fill in this whole area with them. Yes, that's what I'm using. That blue and a magenta, exactly. And guys, I just posted a YouTube channel link for those of you who are wondering. Yeah, it's just Artist Palette Durham. And yes, the video will say up. All right, now let's move on to our moon. Guys, if you're not done your uh, background yet, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You will get a chance to finish. It's no rush at all. But let's quickly do our moon. And then after that, we're actually gonna go back to our background because we still haven't added black and we're gonna need black here. I just wanted to dry up maybe a second before we move on to our black here. So what are we gonna do? You're gonna wash off your large brush and you're gonna dry it on a cloth and then you're gonna take lots of white. So a lot, a lot, a lot of white because we're gonna to need to cover the whole moon with white. So I'm taking lots of white here, going right onto my moon. And with the same circular-ish motion, I'm gonna cover my whole moon with white. And guys, be generous with your white. You don't want to just take a little bit of white and scrape it on top. You want to have a generous, thick layer of white. And the reason why is we don't want it to dry right away. We want it to uh, stay wet when we get to it and we'll start adding a little smidges of pink and purple and blue. So you want to keep it wet until then. And the only how you can do it is by using enough paint so it doesn't dry right away and slightly overlap the edge. You wanna clean up the edge. You see, this is not cleaned up edge. This is the edge as I started. This is cleaned up edge. 
this is me going slightly over and overlapping my purple edge with white. So you want to clean it up. It's just nicer, crisper if you lightly overlap your original um, line of purple. Any, actually, if you wanted to change the shape of your moon, now is the time. You have the ability to do that. So guys, do you see now my edge is nice and sharp and crisp? Okay, I'll give you a second to do this and then I will show you um, those breast strokes that we're gonna add in. Anna, how long is it until YouTube? Probably a couple of weeks, but what you could do, you could wait until this video is fully recorded and then watch the recording. Sometimes we find that we get a feedback from people that when we actually go live, it's hard for them to go live because uh, to watch us live because video keeps interrupting or stopping or it's um, delayed sound or all kinds of issues sometimes happen. But when video stops recording and you go to watch already recorded version, you don't have those issues. So try that. That might work better for you. Awesome guys, so now just grab whichever shade of pink or purple you have on your plate. I have this one, this one. I have a couple shades of purple from um, mixing our background. So whatever you have, just take a smidge of it, just like a little smidge, whichever, and brush onto your moon and make sure you're really, really blended. And that's why we added so much white and that's why we want it wet. So you should, do this right away. As soon as you have your white, don't wait for your white to dry. It's much, much easier to do this almost immediately. So you could stop at just purple. You don't have to add more colors, but you can. What you could do, you could add either another shade of purple, you can add a brushstroke of pink or brushstroke of blue. I think I wanna add a one bluer one. And if you're, um, another thing to keep in mind, if you're white starts drying up and you feel like, oh, my white is half dry at this point, don't take straight color, mix it with white before you add it. So make a very, very light color. If your white starts drying up, make a very light blue or very light purple or very, very light pink and only then go to add a smidge. So I'm adding second color and this is just a bluer purple. And I'm blending. Now, if you find that it's hard for you to blend, another technique for blending is you wash off your brush, then you lightly dab it on a cloth or a paper towel, and why you do that? To get rid of that extra excess water so it doesn't drip on your canvas when you start going on your canvas. So you get rid of that extra water, your brush still should stay pretty wet, and with this wet, clean brush, you just go over your brush stroke and you will see that it will start blending. This is like a wet brush blending. It's actually really good and it works very well for dry backgrounds. If your background, if your white, let's say, it's still really, really, um, if your background is still really, really wet, you don't have to do that. It will blend perfectly regardless. But once it starts drying, you might need to wash your brush and with a clean, wet brush blend. Technically, you can add a limited amount of colors here. You can add another color if you would like. Totally up to you. Honestly, as many colors as you want, guys. I think I'm gonna add even bluer color. So just, my next color, I'm gonna add just white with a smidge of blue. But again, you, you can be okay with just one color. You don't have to have that many, or you can have two, or you can have more than what I have. Go for it. So do you see I added a couple smidges? Now, because my white is very dry at this point, it's not blending properly, so I did smidges. Right away, I washed off my brush. I dabbed it over the cloth, and now with a clean, wet brush, we're gonna go right over them, and you see, it blends. 
great. I think I'm okay with this. I don't want to add any more. I'm quite satisfied with what I have going on here. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. And once you have it, let me know in chat. And I'll show you our next steps. We'll be moving on to our black here. Oh yeah, no rush. And if you would like to um, scroll back, if let's say you want to see another part of this video you would like to rewatch again, you don't have to do this in a live format. You can just scroll back and rewatch certain parts of it. No problem at all. Sorry guys, I'm just messing with it. All it is. Okay, couple minutes. Let me know when you're done. Jessica, if you're getting harsh brush lines, that could be, yes, one thing. It could be it could be uh, just too harsh bristles of a brush, so it could be not the perfect brush for you. You might want to switch to a softer brush. Or alternatively, that could be that you don't have enough paint on it or your paint is too thin. So maybe you need to just grab a bit more paint on it. And another thing it could be, it could be the paint that you're using. Some paints are a bit more streakier than others. So sometimes you would have a uh, certain paint and you will have the best brush, but it will still be streaky. That's just the paint. So it could be either one of those. White as glue, that's a solution. A point for creativity right there. Good for you. Um, I actually have seen people use the house paint, the, you know, the paint that you paint walls with to use as white because they didn't have white in the house and it really worked actually too. So house paint for white, anyone? Okay, I see a couple people done. Not enough from 441 people, so I'm gonna wait a couple more minutes. And then when I see more of you say that you are done and ready, that will move forward. Okay, I see more questions here in chat. If you don't have dark blue to outline them, that's fine. Just use purples. Background, you can use all shades of purple. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. As long as they're purple, and there are lots of them, and they're different, you're all good. You can alternatively use pinks and blues and just do the mix of I have pinks, have blues. That will look really nice too. Will we be doing the Northern Lines? We don't have any Northern Lights scheduled, but however, we did host Northern Lights last month. So if you go on our website, you might be able to find a recording for a Northern Lights painting. 
Okay, I see lots of done. This is great. This is awesome. Yay. Do not use black. You can use any other colors here. Just do not use black. It doesn't have to be dark. Awesome. All right, guys. Now we're going to use on, uh, move on to black. Now we're going to actually take black and we'll go on to the ends here. Let me show you. So just grab some black and put it on your palette. And I saw your comment about brand. I'll show you the brand of paint that I'm using in a second. Once we do the step, then I'll show you the brand of paint. Is this gouache painting? No, this is a student grade acrylic. But you could use gouache. Gouache has very similar texture and it blends very similarly. So you could totally use that if that's what you have at home. All right, so now I'm gonna grab some black. I'm gonna grab my brush, large brush. I will wash it off really well. You don't wanna have any white left on it. So make sure it's nice and very clean. So now I'm gonna grab a little bit of this black. I'm gonna scoop it on the side and I'm actually gonna water it down a little. So I'm just gonna dip my brush in the water and with a full brush of water, I'm gonna add it to this black. So I just wanna water down my black a little bit. And the reason why is I want it more transparent here. I don't want a very straight, solid, uh, thick black. I want it slightly uh, more transparent. Don't water it down to the degree that's gonna run down your canvas. And maybe you don't need to do this at all. Maybe your paint is already same transparent. In my case, my black is very thick and very solid. So that's why I'm slightly watering it down. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start blending from the corners. So I'm gonna start adding brush up from the corner here and then from the bottom as well. So let me show you. You see, first couple brush strokes are gonna be really solid because that's where you start, right? Do you see? It's a lot of black. But as you run out of paint on your brush, you're gonna get more transparent. So it looks more blended. And the other thing you should be doing, so here you push hard where you start, and then you, as you go further into your, your sky, into your background, start pushing less on your brush. So you wanna push just a touch to kind of scrape the surface of your canvas, but don't push hard because you're gonna end up with a line. You don't want lines, you don't want blobs. So we're trying to avoid the blobbiness. And another thing you could do, if it turned out to blobby, you can either grab your finger and just smudge it with your finger, or alternatively, wash off your brush and with a clean wet brush as I showed you before. Oh, I think I need to sneeze. Nope, not coming, okay. So with a clean wet brush, what you could do, uh, if it turned out a little too streaky or a little too blobby, uh, it doesn't even have to be the same brush. Any brush is fine for blending. So with a clean wet brush, go right over your blobs and smudge them. So that's another thing you could do to fix it in case it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to from the first try. And we're gonna continue going down doing the same thing. So let's say, now I'm gonna start here. You see black, black, very black. And then I'm gonna continue going up. Ideally, you wanna do it without blending with second brush, you just wanna blended by using a bit less paint on your brush by running out of paint and touch your canvas only very lightly so you could get this effect that way um, and we'll add a couple more going here and again if that doesn't turn out clean a brush grab a clean wet brush and blend it with a clean brush i'm actually going to show you the blending just in case i'm going to put a really bad blob here intentionally guys do you see that looks really blobby so now i'm going to show you how to blend it just in case it went a bit too blobby for you so i'm going to take another brush it's nice and clean and slightly wet and i'm going to go around the edges of this blob so and i'm not going right into the middle of my blob i'm going mostly on the edges on the surroundings of my blob and i'm going to be washing rewashing and cleaning my brush again and again as many times as needed until it's blended. You see, it was a blob, 
and now it's a beautiful blended streak. So that's what you want. You can do it with one brush good, if not, no problem. Doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you get there. And guys, if you're doing your edges, don't forget about your edges. You want to go on to your edges right away. And you can either color literally all your edges with black or only wherever you put it on your canvas. Either one is fine. I think I'm going to color this whole edge black. Just because. I think it's going to look great. And you see now our purples pop more as well. And I'll give you all a couple of minutes to do this. So no rush. And as always, when you guys have it, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that it's done in chat here. And then I will show you next steps. Done, done, good. I'll wait a couple more minutes for everyone um, to catch up. Not done, no worries. I'll give you guys some time, no rush. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Yes, more done and ready. That is great, guys. All right. Now, let's add a couple more things in black. So now, we... For next step, you could either use your medium brush or your large brush, or you can use both brushes. You can use medium and uh, large, whichever works, guys. Or you can use, like, let's say small or medium for the outline and then fill it in with big, whatever works. Because we're going to add our cliff and we're going to add our tree on top. So we'll start with the cliff because the cliff needs to dry faster for us to start actually painting on it. I'm, I think I'm going to go with a medium brush right now, and then I might switch to a different one. But medium brush for the size of my canvas is just the best brush ever. Um, so that's why I'm going to use it. Depending on your size of canvas, choose which one you think is going to work best. But let me show you what we will do. Do you see this cliff? We're going to put all black base for it. So we're going to start by putting a line here. You see, it's not going to go to the edge of the moon. It still should end within our moon. And then from that edge, we're going to put line here. Both lines shouldn't be very straight. For the top one, you don't really care how straight it is, but I do suggest that it's a bit wavy 
and more like a hill versus just a straight horizontal line. Um, for the bottom, again, you see it's not absolutely straight. Horizontal line, it has a bit of a curve here, and it is a bit wavy as well, just because we're trying to imitate the rock, right? So it rarely in nature comes straight. Okay, so now I'm going to take black. Guys, I see your comments. I'm going to respond to you in a second. Let's put our cliff first, and then while it's drying, I will respond to all your comments. So I, added, I took a lot of black on my brush, and I'm going to start by putting a line somewhere around here. You could go higher if you wanted to. You could go lower. It's absolutely up to you. Make sure you leave a bit of space for your tree so you don't want to run out of space for the tree, but other than that, you can decide how far um, you're going to put this line. So I'm going to put it in. This is as far as I'm going to put it because I still need to have a little bit of moon here. Actually, let me change the shape a little, make it a bit hillier. That's a word. And after that, I'm going to go on to the bottom. And make this thing to the hip. Perfect. So do you see I have one line, one line, and now I'm gonna color it all in with a black. And that's where you can use large brush if you would like, but I find that medium brush works perfectly fine as well. You don't necessarily have to switch to a different brush unless you want to. And for those of you who are doing edges, you might want to do your edge right away here as well. So wherever uh, black paint goes on your canvas, just extend it onto the edge of your canvas. And another thing, guys, just right away to look out for, if you see some areas, sometimes when you just fill your brush and you start painting, sometimes your paint will go as blobs in certain areas. So, if you see any blobs, or remove them or smudge them right away, because if you have um, nice coverage in most of spaces, but a couple blobs, it's gonna dry uneven. So the, everything that's covered properly is gonna dry faster, but the blobs are gonna be still wet when we move on painting it, and then you can accidentally smudge them and make a mud. So just make sure you don't have large blobs of paint. Just go over it again and get rid of any blobs that you have potentially. Okay, and now, as always, guys, when you have it, give me a thumbs up in chat. Let me know that you're done. In the meantime, let me see what comments are here. Can you use gesso for white? Absolutely. Go for it. Can you mix oil with acrylic? No. Oil is oil-based paint, acrylic is a water-based paint. You can usually use, you can mix water-based paints with water-based paints and oil-based paints with oil-based paints. So you could mix acrylic with watercolor, you can mix it with gouache, anything water-based you can mix together. Um, oil, unfortunately, is not water-based, so I would definitely not recommend that, and it's, it's just not going to work. Do you ever change water? No, I do never change my water. I continue painting with the same dirty water, guys. But it is beneficial to change your water. Not yet, I'll tell you when to change it. Not yet, and the reason why, because next step we're still gonna use black. So there is no point for you to change it right now because it's gonna get black in a second again. But once we're done with using black paints here, then you could totally change it when we move on to our 
uh, clouds and a splatter and all those things. I will let you know when that is. Oh, your black is oil. Okay, so as long as you don't mix them, it should be fine, but I wouldn't recommend using them on the same painting either. And the reason why is your oil is going to be drying longer. So acrylic usually dries 5 to 20 minutes. Oil dries days. So let's say if your black is oil and we need to add acrylic or like white or um, pink over it, A, it may not go on it. B, it may, um, it may have a conflict in drying times. So it may be a disaster, but if you don't want trying, try it. And let us know how it works. You are welcome, guys. Anytime you need me to make a mistake and show you how to fix it, I'm all yours. My favorite thing to do. <laughs> Okay, I see a couple done, and there are a lot of very helpful comments in chat here. So if you guys have a second, check them out. Yeah, especially about oils and acrylics and everything else, mixing colors. Good stuff, guys. Good knowledge sharing here. Um, yeah, okay, so let's talk about that too. If your black here, if your background, let's say either your white, your purple wasn't dry, and we started adding black and we started mixing it to all shades of gray, that's okay. You have two options. Option number one, you let it dry and then add second layer of black. Option number two, you live with it. You don't worry about it because we can add so many purples and other colors over it, that it really, you're not going to see much of this black in the end. This is just the base that we added to add colors on top. So if it's a little gray, it's not a big deal. And alternatively, what you could do after you finish adding all the purples on it, you could go back to black and just add a little bit of straight black on top. So that will work too. I would suggest actually doing that versus letting it dry and adding second layer of black. Either one is fine. It's just you're not going to have time probably to have uh, first layer, then dry in between, then second layer, then dry again, and then um, still keep up with us and paint. So I probably suggest just roll with it and once we're done add a bit more straight black that would be better. If you don't mind spending a bit more time and maybe going a few steps behind, let it dry, add second layer, then let it dry again. Right, I see a lot of people saying ready. That is good. Now guys, I'm going to show you our tree. You can do tree either with just small brush. We're only doing tree trunk and branches for right now. We're not doing all the pretty fluff on top. So you can either um, use a medium brush and small brush, or you can use just the small brush. And what we'll start with, we're gonna start by painting the tree trunk, and only then we're gonna do branches. Let me show you our original painting so you know what to aim for. This is our tree trunk. Couple things about tree trunk. Thing number one, notice how it is on the angle. So it's not straight, it's on angle. So we're gonna start by actually putting one line on angle just for us, just for us to fix that angle in our brains, to know that there is an angle, it's not gonna be straight, and then we'll work around it. After that, we will start adding sides. Do you see they're curved? So they're not straight edges. There's some sort of a shape to them. So we'll do that and there are roots. That's another thing to keep in mind. Now, all those highlights are gonna be added on top. You don't worry about them right now. You just need a black solid base. Roots, you're not gonna see much because remember our uh, base here is right now just solid black. 
but keep in mind that there will be roots so you want to extend your tree trunk far enough for the roots and after that we're going to move to branches we're going to add a whole bunch of branches here some of them are going to be bigger some of them are going to be smaller and we will be using smaller brushes as well for the branches so now i think i'm going to use my medium brush for the tree trunk but again feel free to use small brush it is always easier to use small brush it just takes a little longer we'll start by putting a line to indicate uh, where our tree trunk starts on on this hill and the angle and remember you don't want to run out of space for the swing so make sure you leave enough space for the swing you don't want to go too close here alternatively if you do go too close you can put swing on this side so in the end it really is all good but if you want to have swing on this side make sure you leave a bit of space now that we had our first line, we're going to work this into a tree trunk. As you can see, my tree trunk is quite thick. You can definitely have thinner tree trunk if you would like, but if you would like to have it as thick as I have it, go for it. You are welcome, guys. Thank you for all the nice comments there in chat. Now, once we have our tree, we're gonna start adding branches. Branches, so very important about this tree. Branches are not gonna be straight lines going places. They are all need to be sorta of horizontal. I know it's hard to explain, but I'll do my best. So let me show you a couple and you'll understand what I mean. What are we gonna do? We're not gonna put a branch out like this. So usually when we paint trees, we just start branches from a tree trunk and put them out, right? In this case, we are not gonna do that. We will be putting branches out from a tree trunk, but they're not gonna be straight up. They're gonna be up and to the side, up and to the side, or down and to the side. They're all gonna be ending on this to the side kind of movement. So let me show you. I'm gonna be using uh, the top edge of my, of my medium brush here, but I do highly recommend that you use small brush instead because it's much easier to make fine lines with a small brush. And make sure they are not straight. Straight is not your friend here. So do you see, you always start from the tree trunk, you can go a little up, and then you end on to the side kind of movement. And I will be adding a whole bunch of those. They all need to be thicker where it started from. That's why we're adding all of them starting from the tree and bringing them out. Never start branches the other way around. You don't want to start here and bring it here because then this is going to be the thickest point and this is going to be thin. And A, it's not going to look good. B, it's not going to look realistic because branches are never thicker on the end than where they connect to the tree. So let's add a couple more. And remember, most of those that we're adding now, you're not going to see in the end. They're all going to be covered with our leaves. So now I'm actually going to switch to small brush because my medium brush doesn't give me any ability to do smaller lines. And I will add a couple more branching out from those lines. And again, as, it, as you can see, they're not really going up. They're mostly going maybe a little up, maybe a little down, but they still end onto this movement to the side. And I'll add a smaller branch right here. Coming out from the side.
Okay, I'm quite happy with this. And so, guys, there is a branch here that we're going to add our swing on. I'm going to add this one later. I'm going to paint it after we've done everything because swing is like the last thing on this painting. So I'm not even putting it now. If you would like to put it now, go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to. Um, you can totally do this now or you can do it later. It's totally up to you guys. I will leave it for now. And again, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Once you guys have it, let me know and I'll show you next steps. Yes, for all of you who are not there yet, I am giving you guys some time to catch up. I'm just going by what are you telling me as far as comments. When I see lots of you saying that you are done and ready, that's when we move. Lots of you tell me that you're not done and not ready. I can totally wait for you, no problem at all. Also, guys, remember you can um, scroll back through this video and rewatch certain areas if you would like. And you can finish it at another day too because the video is going to be available on our Facebook page for a few weeks. It's not going anywhere. And then after a few weeks, it's going to be moved from here and moved to uh, YouTube where it's going to stay for a very, 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 very long time. Okay, I see some done. Oh, guys, I forgot. I, I promised to show you the brand of paint. So we're using a couple different brands. One of them is Starred Acrylic. We pers we buy it in at Curry's. Um, so for those of you who reside in different region, go for it. Curry sells it. For those of you who are in any other place in the world, I would say Google it and see if your local store carries this brand. Or maybe you can find reviews on the internet saying what uh, similar brands are sold in your area where you live. That's one of the brands that we're using. Another one is Another couple of brands that we use, uh, this one, Artist Loft from Michaels. So you could do that. White is probably the best out of them. Black and other colors are not bad, but white is the best. And if you're buying black, make sure you're buying black that is not transparent because they do have a black that is semi-transparent. So try not to buy that one unless that's what you're going for. And third brand that we use a lot is Art Noise. I actually don't remember where this one is from because we had it for so long. Yes, thank you, Deborah. Curry ship through Canada, and yes, which is perfect, right? Sometimes they can be out of the start brand just because it's so good and a lot of people use it. So sometimes they would have it, sometimes they would not, but it's definitely worth the money. It's very large jars. If you do this every now and then, you're going to use it. It's really worth the money. And it's not that expensive either. There are brands of paint that for the same price, you get maybe 120s of this. So definitely recommend. All right, I see a couple of people are done and ready, but 
knowing the amount of you, the guys that are watching and people who said done, that's not a very high percentage yet. So I'll give you a couple more minutes to make sure I'm not losing anyone behind. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Mary, we use a few different brands. We're using Stark from Curry's and we're using Artist Loft from Michael's and we're using Art Noise. Okay, guys, there are more suggestions here actually um, in chat. So take a look. If you have a minute, if you've done the step and you have a minute, take a look. There are really good suggestions there. And yes, thank you guys for sharing. This is a really good uh, that we all get to share our experiences to see which paint works, which paint doesn't. Because we don't want to make mistakes, right? We don't want to buy paint that doesn't work, that we just waste money on. So that's really helpful. That's awesome. All right, guys. Now we're gonna let all of this dry up for a little bit and we're gonna do something really, really fun here. While that is drying, we're gonna splatter onto our sky. And if it gets on our moon, that's actually not a bad thing. You do want it to get on your moon a little bit. So you're going to be splattering multiple shades of pinks, purples, blues. Just make sure they're not crazy dark. So I would say light to medium is good. And you can use your medium brush or your large brush for it, whichever you prefer. Totally up to you. Okay. So. I'm going to start with splattering with my medium purple, just because why not? I still have a bit of purple on my plate. I'm just going to grab my large brush, mix it with some white. Uh, so I will dip my brush in the water. Then I will take some white. So I took some white and I mix it into purple that I had already. And you see it happened medium. It's about medium purple, medium to light purple. And now there are different options on how you can splatter. Option number one, you put your canvas Flat. So you put it like this and you do this. And let me show you what that's going to do for you. Do you see your splatter is going to go more in lines? You, when you think of ink splatter, it's going to do something very similar. And it's not bad, but it really up to you whether you like that look or not. Alternatively, second option on how to splatter is you use two brushes. You use large brush and medium brush and one of them is clean and one of them has paint on it and you see how i have lots of paint on my brush so it's all in the bristles of my brush it's not just a blob on top because if you just take a bit of paint on top of your brush once you start splattering it's going to fly like a blob you don't want a blob you want firework not a blob thanks mary okay yes my name is vera for those who missed it Option on how to splatter two. You hold the brush that is clean in your left hand if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, just reverse the order. So you hold brush that is clean in one of your hands. Brush that has paint on it, you bang on the clean brush. So this hand and this brush don't move. This hand and this brush do move. Don't do this too far from the painting because it's gonna end up on your face and not on your painting. You wanna stay fairly close to your painting for this. The closer the better. It doesn't have to be like almost on it. I would usually stay about two inches away from my painting, but don't do like this. Don't do like a foot from your painting because this platter is not going to land that far. So I'm going to go that far. And you can splatter this way. I personally like, uh, like to mix and match both of those techniques. I'll have a couple splatter down in that technique and they'll be bigger and they'll have a movement. 
And then I'll have some splatter that's more like fireworky and fine. I like having both. And you splatter it all over your background, so everywhere. And yes, a little bit on your moon as well. If you want to hit your um, tail just a touch, not a mistake. It's not guaranteed that you're going to see it in the end, but it's going to look good. So maybe, maybe splatter a little bit there too. Once you have your light purple, I'm going to do two more colors. I'm going to do pink and I'm going to do white probably. Alternatively, you could do light blue as well. Technically, you can do any color that's similar to what you have going on there. So you can do light blues, light purples, uh, multiple shades of purples, light pinks, whites, all of that will do great. So my next one, I'm just going to do light pink. I'll take some white on my brush, scoop it on the side, add a touch of my primary red. Make it a light pink. Now this color I'm going to splatter some more. So I'm going to start with a large splatter. And once I have the large splatter, I'm going to do a small splatter. And then I'm going to finish up with just a little bit of white splatter. Again, same deal. I'll wash off my brush, take some white, and I'm going to start by adding white splatter. And then just a touch of the small splatter. And guys, I'm going to put this flat for just a second because my large splatters are pretty big. Let me show you closer. You see some of them are really juicy and watery and they need to stay flat for a second. Otherwise, they're going to start running down. So I'm going to put it flat for a second. Just letting you know that I'm not abandoning you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just putting my painting flat so it can dry for a second. And what I'm going to do right away, and I highly, highly recommend that you do that too, is damage control. Do the damage control right away because splatter is such a thing that no matter how careful it is, it's going to go everywhere. It's going to go on your face, on your clothes, on the surroundings, wherever you're doing this. So just make sure as soon as you have it, that you leave it alone for a little. If you grab a cloth or a napkin or a paper towel, and you wipe the splatter off any surfaces that it got in. So I'm gonna give you all a couple of minutes to do this. And as always, once you guys have it, let me know in chat. My damage control was pretty easy today. Guys, for those of you who are just joining us now, no worries. This video is going to stay on our page for a while so you can re-watch it whenever you have a second or a day or two. Yes, okay, troubleshooting with splatter. A, make sure your paint is not too thick. One of the reasons why sometimes it wouldn't splatter if that's if your paint is very thick. So in that case, just grab a bit of water in your brush and water down your paint a little bit. The wetter your paint is, the more watered down it is, the better it's gonna splatter. So that's one. Two, you need to have a decent amount of paint on your brush. So you need to have actually lots of paint on your brush to splatter. And three, remember, don't just take what is a big no-no is this. So this is a big no-no, having paint just on the end of your brush, because if you start splattering like this, it's going to fly in like a blob. You're only going to get blobs. You're not going to get the fireworks. 
So make sure you get paint into all the bristles of your brush. And yes, water is a must. Guys, for those of you who just joined us, you could totally rewind this video, even in a live format, to the beginning and watch it from the very beginning. All right, I'll give you a couple more minutes. I see a couple of people saying they're done, but again, very small percentage, not everyone, not even half. How often do I put my brush into water to rinse? All the time. So every time when I move to next step, and especially if I'm using different paint, I use a lot of water and I wash my brush all the time. Just make sure you don't leave your brush in the water because sometimes you might forget and then it's gonna ruin your brush. Yay. All right, glad you guys are having fun. My paints have dried up a little. I don't think my splatters are gonna run anymore so I'm just gonna let it stay the way it should stay now. Um, if, so for next step, I'm not doing it yet, so that's okay. If you're not there yet, I'll give you a couple minutes. I just want to let you know that for next step, when we're ready for it, we're going to move on to this hill and we will add a bit of purple on our hill, but our hill needs to be fairly dry. So if you guys feel like your hill is really, really wet and it's not drying fast enough, what you could do Two options. Option number one, grab a hair dryer, hair dry. If you're already done splatter, just go for it now. Grab your hair dryer, hair dry fast. Hair dryer does a really good job. It's gonna get it fast, really um, dry really, really fast. Alternatively, if you don't have hair dryer nearby, you don't feel like going for it, and your paint maybe is almost dry already, what you could do, just to help it dry a little faster, is grab it into your hands and do this. That will help. It might it might not help dramatically, but it does help. I'm telling you from experience, it does help. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it's gonna help you with splatter too a little. To dry my splatter a bit. I don't need my splatter dry for next step, but it's good to have. It's good to get it dry eventually. But we do need our tail fairly dry so if you need to assist your painting in drawing do that now okay that actually dried my hill that's it my hill is dry that was like one minute of doing this but i'll give you still guys a couple minutes of Either this or me, a hair dryer. I hope, I, I hope you like my sound effects. And then we'll move. Done, done, that's great. Good, good, good. Good job, guys, good job. Okay, another minute and we'll move. Should we change your water? You can, but you don't have to yet because we're still going to be working on a purple. So it's a good time to change your water. You will definitely need to change your water once we start doing our clouds because our clouds need to be nice and light. So 
before that, you should change your water. You could change it now if you like, or you can change after we've done this step with a, a purple on our heel and before we move on to our pot. There are going to be lots of leaves on my too. So don't worry, we'll cover all those branches up. You can only keep those that you like visible. The rest is carbon. Mostly adding them for the structure. All right, guys, I'm gonna be moving forward and I will be moving to purple. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna go onto this hill. And do you see the difference? This is where we start with, this is where we're gonna end up. So there are lots of shades here that make it actually look like a hill. So black, there are certain areas that you want to keep black. So all this, do you see? That is what we have now. So you don't want to get rid of it. If you want to define the shape by using the black that you have as a backdrop. And we will add lots and lots of highlights as well. And we will work from dark to light. So we already have black, now we're gonna move on to our first shade of purple that's gonna be any medium to dark purple is good. So just make medium to dark purple. It can be bluer, it could be redder, totally up to you, doesn't really matter. There's no particular shade that it has to be. As long as it's not too light, it will work. Yeah, I made my purple. I'm gonna try just this match and see if that's a good color. That is a perfect color. I'm quite happy with this one. Do you see that's the color I'm gonna be using right now? I'm actually gonna remove it. Now that I showed you, you've seen it. All right, guys, now, moving on to our hail. I'm gonna take my purple, my medium brush. Bye, Laura. Okay, now I'm gonna start by adding the top. I'll add it from here. I'm using the top edge of my medium brush. If you would like for the step to use actually small brush, go for it. I like using as little, as, um, little brushes as possible. I don't like using multiple brushes but you could use multiple brushes here too. So we're gonna start adding a line. I'm gonna add it here, and another one here. It's pretty much. And then once I have that, I'm gonna color this flick from here out. You see flicks from the edge out. And you can either define your roots now with this purple or you can do it later and just add more black once we get there. Either one is totally fine. Okay, now once we have this, we're gonna move on to the bottom. So I'm gonna start with this one. Do you see there is like a cliff? There's another rock that is sticking out. So I'm gonna go with that and with the top edge of my medium brush or you can use a small brush, you can add a line. If your um, splatter here is wet and it blends in, that's not a big deal. That actually works in your favor. So just go with it. And then I'm gonna add a couple brush strokes very, very lightly.
along on the right side of it. Just a few. You see the shape starting to appear. It's not there yet, we only have one color, but it's getting there. It will get better and better. And then you can separate this into a couple of those rocks. Um, you can have one, two, three, as many as you can fit in there, and it really depends how big this area is. I think I'm gonna get one, one more right here. And that's pretty much it. So that is my first layer of purple. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes and then we'll move on to more layers of purple. Thank you, Donna. All right, guys, now I'm just going to use different shade of purple. So to the same purple I just used, I think I'm going to add a little bit more white and a little bit more pink or red, whichever you're using, to make it a slightly, a little touch lighter and a little more pinker as well. And with this color, let me try the color again and see if I like it. Oh, yes, I love it. So I'm going to bring more brush strokes here. Actually, I might need to go even lighter. It seems to be blending too much. Yeah, let's go lighter. Let's add more white and more pink to my color. That might be good. You see it's getting lighter, right? Now I'm going to add just a bit more on the same, following the same shape of the hill. I'm going to add this color, this new color, but I will add less of it than what I had of purple. So just a little bit, not as much as I had purple. I had lots of purple, this one, just on the edge. You're welcome, Patricia, and thank you for joining us. And guys, for those of you, if any of you are falling behind, remember, you can rewind this video. If you need to rewatch certain areas, feel free to rewind. I am going at the pace of majority and I know that we still have a lot to go and we're almost at two hour mark. So I'm gonna need to stick with this pace, but if you need to rewind, go for it. Or if you would like to wait until this video is fully finished recording, once it's done recording and the recorded ver version would be saved on Facebook and on YouTube, then you can just pause it. 
pause it to give yourself enough time for every step and then uh, continue, just push play again whenever you're ready. So all of that works. Okay. And now I am gonna switch my brush and I'm gonna grab my small brush. So wash off my medium brush, put it aside, grab my small brush, and I will switch to even lighter color. So you can go with light pink or light purple here, grab a bit more white, um, and yeah, either add it to your existing light purple, you can make a light pink, either one is fine, just make sure it's very, very light. And with this color, or you can do light blue as well. All of this works. Light blue, light pink, light purple, as long as it's very light. Let's go with light blue. I'm gonna go with light blue, why not? So we're gonna start adding it onto the top again, right on the edge. and then flicking it a little. You see it got even lighter. And then we're going to highlight the edge and those rocks as well. So I'm going to start right at the edge here. Isn't that amazing how a couple brush strokes of paint change things? Yeah, Mary, that's about sky blue, yeah. It's a very, very light blue, like baby blue. Let me show you on my palette which one I used. It's the one I used. Blows my mind, my mind every time how shapes emerge once you start adding more colors and layer them. And while we're having so much fun with purples, why don't we add some on our tree as well, right? Why not? We're having lots of fun. We probably still have humix purples from using them on our hill, so we might as well. So if you have small brush in your hands, good, just grab. If you still have pre-mixed that darker purple that you used first, you can use that one. If not, any shade of purple that's fairly dark or um medium to dark, grab that one. And with a small brush, we can add a couple lines here. I usually start based on what kind of curve I have closer to the edge. So I'm gonna go here, I'll make it into a line. But you see I'm following the curve. Oh, it's hard to see actually. Okay, let me make my purple a little lighter just so you guys can see it better. But I would suggest going medium to dark here. Yeah, that's more visible. Now I'm gonna, again, start with the shape of what I can see, and then those snaky lines. I 
and that's pretty much it. Do you see I covered um, all the tree with those wavy, snaky lines in purple that actually have black in between, so they're not really squished. And after that, you can add a couple of highlights on them with either lighter shades of purple or pinks or blues. So if you has, still have this lighter purple, you can use that as a second highlight and then you can use white or your light blue as your final highlight. You see just a little couple of flicks. It's nothing crazy, nothing hard, just a couple of flicks, all it is. Ta-da, my tree trunks is done. And if in the process you feel like you lost your black, what you could do, you could just take some black and add it wherever you feel like you lost it. If you feel like you lost it in between, add it in between. Honestly, wherever. Don't feel like you have to preserve your black. Ideally, you should preserve your black, but if not, that's fine. You can always add black later if you lost a bit, either on a tree or even on a bottom. If you feel like you accidentally got rid of all your black, don't worry about it. Just add a bit more of it. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a second to do all that. I know it's a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you a second to do all this and then I'll show you our next steps. After that, we'll let it all dry and then we'll move on to our clouds. We're going to add a couple of clouds here. My accent is Russian, and thank you. Done, yes, I see the first done, but I'll give you guys a couple of minutes, no worries. For those of you who are like, oh, don't move yet, we're not there yet, I know. I know you're not there yet, that's okay. I'll give you a little bit more time. Now guys, for those of you for whom maybe this is the first time joining us for painting, I am so glad you're here, guys. Um, let me just tell you a bit more about what we do while I wait for you guys to catch up so you know what to expect. We do this free paint night event, paint night type events. A couple times a week, usually about twice a week, you can see our upcoming schedule uh, on top we pinned it on top of our facebook page there's like a beautiful visual calendar that shows everyone that everything that we do every single painting that we have coming up in the month of september and we usually have them every month those calendars so you can easily see what's coming up and you know what to expect so we do those free paint night type events uh twice a week we also do zoom events and we do them pretty much all the rest of the week and those you can find on our website. They are um, $10 a ticket, and there is a recording for them available as well for all of them. And we also have our recordings of our past events on our website that you can find. Um, yes, and to answer your questions in chat, absolutely, the video will be available to watch. You can actually see some of our past, the free Facebook Live events. If you go onto Facebook, click on Video tab, you will see everything that we have posted in probably last three, four weeks that we haven't moved to YouTube yet. 
So just check it out if you would like to see if anything, um, if there's anything that you would like to paint because it's there. But keep in mind, if it already been on Facebook, see if the date uploaded. If the date uploaded is close to three, four weeks, keep in mind it can be removed any day. However, it's not going to be gone. It's just going to move to YouTube. So if you started painting something on Facebook and then you feel like you go back and it's gone, it's nowhere to be found, go to YouTube. It will be there. You'll find it there. Awesome. Well, welcome for, to those of you who are first timers. Uh, Facebook, just click on the name of our page. Uh, that will take you right to our Facebook page and website. If you go into description of our page or even see there's a top post that's pinned on our page that has a calendar, it has a link to website too. So if you click on that, um, it will get you right to website. And generally website is paintnightdurham.com. So yes, nothing complicated. All right, how are we doing? Do we have this or do we need a couple more minutes? I see a couple done, but not a lot. Is there somewhere to share our finished work? Absolutely there is. Once this video is done recording and it's going to be posted on our Facebook page, just post it in comments. That's what we usually do. That way everyone who participated can see everyone else's paintings. Because that's the most fun, right? It feels like we're all over the world, all of us joining from so many different locations, but we're also all at the same place, painting the same painting. So once you see all those comments with the results, it just, it's just so good. Makes my heart very happy. So feel free to post it there. Can I see the original? Absolutely. There you go. And since I have originally in my hands already, we're going to move on to our clouds. Now, something to know about clouds. We're going to do them in layers. Again, we're going to use a couple different shades. We're going to use uh, medium to dark purple, then we're going to use medium to light pink, then light blue and white. So we're going to use four different colors. You can modify and change colors around. Totally fine. You don't have to stick with exact colors that I'm using, but I will be using this four colors and I'll be using my medium brush. And another thing that's very important for this clouds is you cannot use too much paint. It almost has to be dry brush. So it's almost dry brush smudging and dabbing on top. Um, yeah, that's very important here. So let me show you. So I'm going to start with purple. Medium, medium to dark purple, I would say, as long as it's visible here and on your clouds. It's all good. Oh, sorry, not clouds, on your moon. It's all good. So I'm going to try this purple that I already have pre-mixed from while we're using here and see if it works or not. If it doesn't, it's fine. I'll, I'll mix something else. But if it works, perfect. If you didn't leave space for the swing, you can add it on this side. That's no problem. So I took my purple. Yeah, I think I could, I could go with this purple. I can see it. So now, with just a little bit of paint on my brush, I'm going to start dabbing my cloud. I'll bring it a little bit onto the... Slightly going to overlap my cliff and my moon as well. Do you see how light and transparent it is? Can you use sponge? Absolutely, you can. Guys, as soon as I show you clouds, I'm going to take a look and respond to all your messages, I promise. Um, so, we're going to do a little combo of clouds here. So, there's going to be a couple of them here. 
and I'll do them in this color first. You can position yours completely different. It doesn't matter how you position your clouds, as long as they're nice and light and fluffy, that all that matters here. And technically, you could use your large brush as well. Doesn't have to be just, doesn't have to be specifically medium brush. If you find that you're struggling using medium brush, switch to large brush, no problem. Okay, so I added my little gang of flowers right here. Now I'm gonna add one here, one here, one here, that's it. But before I do that, I wanna talk a bit more about the shape of my clouds. I wanna show you the shape of my cloud on the back of my painting with black, just so you can see it better, because I noticed that it's really hard to see purple. So I'm gonna use black and I'll show you what shape we're aiming for. We're shaping, we're aiming for, um, fluffier middle point your sides so let's say you start i usually try to start in the middle of the cloud and then i extend it up and down and towards the sides But this is about the shape that you're looking for. Do you see it has a fluffier middle and it has a point to your sides. So that's pretty much the shape. Point to sides, thicker middle. That's what you want. And you want them to be a bit thicker and less transparent, more solid, closer to the middle. And then you want them fluffier and more transparent onto the edges. So again, I added a couple here. Now I'm going to go back onto my purple and I'm going to add two right here. Another thing, guys, if you find that it's not turning out right for you and it still looks a bit too blobby, just grab your finger and go over it doing this with your finger. Dab, 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 dab. It will make it smoother. It will get rid of that brush texture. If you don't like it, it will make it look more cloudy and more foggy in a way. So, but this only works while it's wet. So if this, if you're figure, you're seeing any problems with you seeing too much breast strokes, you seeing too much texture, you seeing too much bristle um, marks, just grab your finger and do this right over it with your finger. That will really help. Now I'm going to add large ones here. And I'll add one right here. And that's pretty much it. But again, guys, look at your painting and see what does it need. Does it need more? Does it need less? If it doesn't need that many clouds, don't add that many clouds. It's totally fine for you to have less clouds. However, if you look at your painting, you feel like, oh, no, Mike, could definitely use more clouds. Go for it. Add more clouds. It's not a mistake. 
all our paintings so unique and different that you really have to just look at your painting and see what it what your specific painting needs. But I personally really like breaking up my moon a little bit with clouds. I just like when my clouds go a little bit onto my moon. I find that it looks really pretty. And if you guys would like, feel free to bring your clouds onto the edge of your canvas. If you already painted your canvas edge with either purple or black, feel free to bring your clouds onto the edge as well. Just dab your edge a bit. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. I've done my purple. My purple is fully finished. Now I still have uh, three more colors to go for the clouds. I have pink or color, blue color, and white, but I will give you all a couple minutes to finish. I know it's a lot of work. In the meantime, I'm going to check the comments and see if anyone has any questions. To answer your question, are we going to add all three videos from June to YouTube? If we still have them on Facebook, yes, we uh, started our YouTube channel not so long ago. So what we did before is we actually deleted the videos. So we would have them, let's say, for a couple weeks, sometimes a month, sometimes just over a month on Facebook, and then we'll delete them. And then a lot of you asked for the older videos, so we decided to start a YouTube channel and start moving them there instead instead of deleting them so you guys can still access them. Some of the videos are gone forever. Hopefully we will get time sometime in future to recreate them and upload them to YouTube, but everything that you can see on Facebook right now will be moved to YouTube. Older videos that are gone off Facebook may or may not. Just because we already deleted them, we don't have a copy of them. If we get a chance to recreate them, we'll, we'll upload them, which is the plan. But I can't promise that it's going to happen anytime soon. Is there a charge for YouTube? Absolutely not. YouTube is free to watch for every, everyone at any time. The only thing we charge for is our Zoom events. So our Zoom events do have charge. Facebook events are free same as YouTube, and our recordings that you can purchase from website do have charge. But those are recordings of Zoom events. Well, they're not recordings of Zoom events. Those are uh, recordings, pre-made tutorials for the paintings we taught on Zoom. They're not actually Zoom recordings. Yes, sponge is actually a really good idea. I personally rarely use sponges, but I know a lot of people who do and they love them. So if you guys have sponges, sponges are great for clouds and for blending. Absolutely. So thank you for reminding me that in comments. That is great, guys. Okay, I see a couple duns, which is good. I'm going to show you next color. Honestly, it's pretty much the same thing. You're just going to add less of it and in different color. So next one, I'm going to go with more of a pinker color. So I'm going to mix a whole new one. And I'm just going to start with a base of white and I'm going to add some red to it. I'll make pretty saturated medium to light pink. I think this is a good color, but let me try it first again before I commit to it and before I tell you that this is what we should do. I think this will work. It could be a bit darker, but this should be fine. So do you see this color? Pink? So medium to light pink. You could definitely go darker than this, but you could go lighter too. As long as you like the, like the color, it really all that matters here. We're going to start adding more of the clouds, but now you're not going to add them as big. So you're mostly going to highlight your purple clouds with pink. I'm adding my pink onto the top ish part of the cloud. You see, this is my purple cloud. 
I'm mostly adding it to the top and I'm going to utilize my finger here and I will do that dab 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 lots of dab 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 now I'm going to dab 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 right here with a brush again just on top of my previous cloud and then I'm going to take my finger and dab 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 with a finger You see, our clouds get dimensions. It's really good. And you can do it on all the clouds or half the clouds. It's totally up to you guys. And on some clouds, you can add more, on some clouds less. It doesn't have to be just the same amount on every cloud. I'm adding some more in the random spots that have nothing. Just because I want to. I feel like there should be something, so I'm adding it. So don't feel like that's all you have to do and you cannot step left or right from this. If you feel like there should be something else, add it. So I'm add some info with this cloud. All right, I have my second color. Doesn't this look great? I am so loving this. And I'll move right onto my third color, which is light blue. So I'm gonna grab some white, mix it with a touch of blue, make a light blue. And I will add my third color, my light blue. Pretty much the same thing. It's just this time I'm not going to add it on top. I'm going to add it more in the middle of every cloud. But it doesn't matter. You can add it on the bottom of every cloud too if you wanted to. And pretty much same technique. Either you can do everything with brush very lightly or you can do brush and finger or brush and sponge or just sponge. Whatever works for you guys.
You know what? The good thing about it, you can rework this painting as many times as you want. You don't have to stop at what it looks now. You can continue adding colors to your clouds. If you feel like that's not good, just add a bit more. Add another color. Add darker color. Add lighter color. Continue working on it until you feel like you brought it to a place where you like it. And guys, the more you practice, the better you're going to get. It's not something you have to be born with. The more you do this, the more muscle memory you will have in your hand. Your hand will remember all those techniques the more you do them. And then you're going to get better at it. I promise you. You just have to practice. And another thing, guys, celebrate your success. Whenever you get something right, don't look at 100 things you did wrong. Look at the one thing you did right in your painting and say, good job. Good job. You did well. And just remember those little successes and you will feel very encouraged to continue painting. And you will notice your growth. If you concentrate on negatives and things that you didn't do well or things that didn't work out in your painting, you'll feel very discouraged. You're not going to want to continue. So just choose those things that turned out. It might be one thing, it might be two, it might be three, it might not be a hundred things on a painting, but that's okay. Every time you do it, you're going to have one more new thing that you did really well. So hold on to those things. All right, I have my three colors. I only have, oh, actually, I forgot blue here. Oopsie poopsie, okay. Blue is there now. I have only one more color to go on my clouds. And my last one, I'm gonna do pure white. You see the white really makes a pop here.
Okay, guys, so that is the wrap for our clouds. Done. Done and done and done and done for me. No more clouds. You could technically, if you would like, you can continue adding colors. You don't have to finish here. You can add more clouds. If you would like more shades of purple or more shades of pink or more shades of blue, go for it. The more you add, the more intricate and complicated it's going to look. So don't feel like you have to stop. If you want to keep going, keep going. I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes to finish your clouds. I do see a couple people saying done, but I'll give you a little bit more time because I only see a couple people saying done. Once I see more done, then we'll move on to our tree. So we'll do the top of our tree, all those pretty fluffs. And after that, we'll finish up with our swing, with our grass, and with our stars. We're going to add a couple of stars on our background, and that would be the end of it. Yes, more dance. Good. Awesome. Okay, I see lots of dance, which is good. Now, Emma, that's fine. If your roots are coming out from the cliff, that's totally fine. That's actually pretty realistic because they do that sometimes. So what are we going to do now, guys? We're going to dab some top for our tree. And then we're going to use three different colors. I'm going to use pink or purple. I'm going to use pink and I'm going to use white. So those are the colors I'm going to use. If you would like to add more than that, go for it. I would probably wouldn't recommend less than three colors, but if you want to add more colors or even better, if you want to mix as you go, so you get a large variety of colors that are sort of not planned for, but what happened happened, even better, that might be more interesting. So I'm going to start with like a ready purple color. So again, you just mix it by white, red, or pink and a smidge, tiny, tiny smidge of blue. So it should be like a purple, but with lots of red in it. So like on the redder side, purple. And not dark, it should be about medium. You don't want anything crazy dark there. Let me see, let me try this. That might be okay. So now I'm going to be using my medium brush. My medium brush is square. That's the only one I have. I personally just really like square brushes. So most of my brushes are square. So I'm going to be dabbing with a corner of my brush. If you guys have a pointy medium brush, use that and dab with a point. That would be the best. So if you do have that one, grab it. If not, whichever brush you have, just Figure out what is the best way for you to hold it, on which angle, and do that. So I'm going to start dabbing here, and it's going to be lots of this color. And you see, you want um, closer to the middle. You want it a bit more solid. And then as you go further, you want it a bit more transparent. And if you really like some of your branches, don't cover them fully. Make them visible. However, the middle of your tree should be pretty solid here. I'll add a little bit onto this branch as well. And don't forget to add a couple of flyaway leaves.
So this is my first color. Now right away, I don't need to wait until this one dries. I'm gonna move on to my second color. So we'll wash my brush and I'm just gonna take, make some pink. It should be lighter than this and clearly have no blue. So it's just gonna be white with a little bit of red or pink. And ideally you want it a bit lighter. It's up to you how light your uh, pink is gonna be. For those of you guys who have to go, thank you for joining us. Feel free to post your results. Would love to see them. Okay guys, now I'm overlapping my pink. So I'm keeping this side mostly purple. But from the left, there are a lot of areas where I'm just overlapping my pink. And the last one, I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna, on the same brush, grab some white, straight white, and I'm gonna dab a bit of white all over the place. Ideally, you still want all your colors to be a little wet because you do want your white to blend in a little. If your color is dry, that's not a problem. You can still do this, but if they're still wet, it's probably best because then you will see it's gonna be blending and that's what you want. You want that slight amount of blending. So we're going to add a little highlight with white. Yeah, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes. And as always, once you have it, let me know in comments, in chat, and then I will show you this branch. We'll put it again, or here, depending if you have space here or not. Then we'll let it swing, and grass, couple stars, and we're done. But I'll give you another minute here to finish up all those pretty things on top of the tree. Done, good. Oh no, Jessica, you might need more white paint. Well, maybe not. We will only use it for stars, but if you have light pink, you can substitute for light pink or light blue if you still have something pre mix that is light. 
um, yeah, you don't need much of it at this point. I see lots and lots of you are saying done. So we're going to move on to our black again. So wash off your medium brush, put it aside. You're not going to need it anymore. We're just going to use our small brush from now on. So you're going to grab your small brush. You're going to grab some black paint and we're going to add that branch back. So I'm going to position my branch somewhere here. So just hide it back. You can use, um, you can have branch on the other side. It doesn't have to be. And if you would like to add a couple more of those branches back so you can see them better, go for it. It's not, you don't have to do this. If you feel like, oh no, my branches weren't good in the first place. I am happy they're gone. I'm happy I can't see them anymore. That's okay. Don't add them. But if you felt like, oh, my branches were so great and it's pretty sad that I can't see them anymore, just add them back. No problem. Not all of them, just a couple. And then we're going to add swing. If you still have space on this side, you can add on this side. If not, maybe extend the branch a little bit more on this side and add a swing right here. Either one is a good spot. Guys, if something doesn't look right yet, continue working on it. You don't have to stop. The more you add, the better it's going to look. Just take a break. Sometimes your eyes get tired of the two. If you don't mind spending more than one day, even better, because it's already been almost two and a half hours, you get pretty tired around that mark. So maybe look at it tomorrow and see what can I do to it? How can I improve this? You can always improve it. The more you do it, the better it will be. Okay, now we're gonna add swing. We're gonna add the bottom of a swing first. Colored it right away. You can bring it higher or lower, that's totally up to you. After that, we're going to connect our swing to the branch. So uh, lines will connect our swing to the branch. They're not going to be absolutely straight. They're going to be slightly on angle because we're assuming that there's wind, right? So the wind is rocking um, our swing. So they're not going to be crazy on angle, but they're going to be slightly on angle. Not probably not as much as a tree, but a bit, a little bit. The only thing, make sure the angle is the same for the left one and the right one. That's what matters here. Now we're going to connect the swing to the tree. And each of those lines, you're going to start from the middle of the swing. So do you see? Middle of this line, middle of this line. And now we're going to extend them further and we'll add a little fluff on the other side.
Okay, and now I'm going to add a couple of a little bit of grass. So you can add some here, some here, and you can do it in black or in purple if you still have a bit of purple, totally up to you. I'm going to do it in black probably. Um, so for grass, you're going to flick, use just the tip of your brush and flick from the bottom up. But make sure you water down your black just a touch. I find that your lines are going to be much finer if you're using more liquid paint versus very thick paint. Very thick paint is not going to give you ability to um, do really fine lines. So again, I'm going to get as close to you guys as I can and I'll show you across on this side. You see just the flicks from the bottom up. It's very important that you do it from the bottom up. If you do it the other way around, it's going to be a mess. Your grass is going to be thick on top, thin on the bottom, not the right look. You always have to start from the bottom and flick it up. So do you see a little bit of grass on that side, a little bit of grass on this side. Technically, you can have more of it or less up to you. And guys, the last thing we're going to do here, we're going to add a couple stars. So I'll wash off my small brush. I will take some white paint. And I will add a couple stars here. So let me show you how I do my stars. I start with a dot. Now I flick up, flick down, flick to the left, flick to the right. And now I add smaller flicks in between and all of them I flick from the middle. Ta-da, a star. So you can have a few of those. You can have some bigger, some smaller. Totally up to you where you position them. And I'll finish up with a couple dots in my sky. So just with my small brush and white paint, I'm going to add a couple of dots. Some of them are going to be bigger, some of them are going to be smaller. Those are going to be stars as well. Ta-da! Okay, now another thing you could alternatively do, you don't have to do this, but you can, is take a little bit of white and highlight with white all this now, because the lightest color I have so far is light blue. Maybe you already added white, maybe not, but if you wanted to, you don't have to, you can finish with light blue or light pink, but if you wanted to, you can just take a little bit of white and then a little highlight of white. make it a little bit more contrast. Same with this. Just a touch. Oh, and sorry, I almost forgot, swing. We're gonna add a little highlight on the swing. So we'll add a line right here. And flick up, flick up. That is it. We are officially done. The only thing that you need to do now is pick a good spot and sign it with your name. Because you did all this hard work painting it. Now you should own it. So I'm going to sign it right here. Done. Beautiful. Thank you guys for all your nice words in chat. It's awesome. So this is what the uh, finished result looks like. Guys, if you would like to share your paintings with us, I would love to see them. And I am sure I am not the only one. So if you would like, once we finish, take a photo, post it in comments. You can't do it yet. I don't think it's... Um, Facebook allows you to post pictures and comments before the paint, uh, the live is done. 
I think it only allows you to do that once the live is done and the video is posted, which is going to be in a minute. So feel free to do that. We all would love to see how they turned out. I'm sure they turned out great. Uh, for those of you who missed, this video will stay on our page for a couple weeks and then it's going to be removed to YouTube. So if you're looking for it, maybe you start it now and then you want to finish it you want to finish it in a couple of weeks and you look for it on our Facebook page and let's say you can't find it, go to YouTube. It will be there. I promise. Now, if you guys had fun and you would like to say thank you by tipping me, which is never an obligation. This event is free. You don't have to, but if that's what you want to do, I would never say no to that. You can do that through uh, e-transfer or through PayPal. You can find the link either in comments here in chat or it's um in the description of this video actually and what it does it helps us artists to actually support our families and continue making free events for you and also if you would like to support us by signing up for paid zoom event go for it the benefits of zoom events is it's smaller groups so you get more live feedback right away plus you're supporting your local artists for who this is not a hobby this is a full-time career so guys, again, thank you so much for joining us. And again, just a nice word and a comment and a like always feels good. We'll never say no to that as well. Yay. Okay, does anyone have questions to me before I go? I wanna make sure um, that all questions are answered. So if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them now and I'll do my best to answer them. Oh, and don't forget to do your edges. If you guys haven't done your edges yet, now is the time. And you can do them just all black or all purple, or you can do this section, the one that around the moon white, and the rest black or purple. Black would be totally appropriate. It's probably the easiest way to go. Awesome. Yay, guys. Okay, I don't see any questions. Only kind words in comments. So thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you had lots of fun. And if you need to go back to it, it will be there for you on Facebook. Enjoy your night, everyone. Bye, guys.